DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. Hello and welcome to this week's PB Tech Newscast. Coming up, solar is the fastest growing renewable technology. CPV could be 30% cheaper than PV by 2016. Greece passes tax on solar power plants. And Tokelau Islands powered by 100% solar. Renewables are set to become the world's second largest source of power generation by 2015, with solar the fastest growing renewable technology, according to the International Energy Agency. The IEA's World Energy Outlook 2012 goes on to say renewables will account for one third of the total global electricity output by 2035. Driving the uptake will be falling technology costs, rising fossil fuel prices and carbon pricing. However, the main contributor will be continued subsidies, but these subsidies need to be adjusted over time. The report also highlights energy reduction targets announced by many countries, which it says will help speed up the slow progress in global energy efficiency seen over the last decade. Project developer 8 Minute Energy has begun work on a 266 megawatt solar farm in Imperial County, California, after securing 636 million US dollars in project financing. But this first phase is only part of a bigger project that is planned to finish off at 800 megawatts. 8-Minute Energy Renewables has more than 2,000 megawatt of PV projects currently under development in California. The region has become a PV hotspot in the US, especially for large-scale developments, which include the 550 megawatt Desert Sunlight Solar Farm and the 250 megawatt California Valley Solar Ranch. Improved technology and decreasing costs could boost concentrated CPV installations to 3 gigawatts worldwide within four years, according to a new report from IMS Research. IMS say advances in CPV technology will drive costs down by 16% annually, prompting an increase in installations from today's cumulative total of around 160 megawatt to 3 gigawatts by 2016. The report acknowledged that the upfront cost of a CPV module will always be higher than conventional PV, but points out that with greater cell and module efficiencies leading to higher electricity yields, the levelized cost of electricity can be lower with CPV than conventional PV in its target regions. An investment of 20.8 million US dollars has resulted in Hyundai Heavy Industries completing its new solar research and development center in Umseong, Korea, home to its 600 megawatt of cell and module manufacturing operations. The company is placing increasing emphasis on advanced cell and module technology to differentiate itself in an overcrowded market. They said that it had recently completed the development of copper contact selective emitter solar cells with 19.7% conversion efficiency, as well as a passivated emitter, pearl-based cell, with 20.4% conversion efficiency. A sign of the times, the Greek parliament has passed an austerity package which includes a tax on existing solar power plants. According to reports, the tax will be between 25 and 35 percent, depending on when PV plants were connected to the grid. The tax is aimed at helping the country reduce its deficit, which is currently running at 165.3 percent of GDP. Unlike other technology industries, not enough PV manufacturers take the chance to honor suppliers with awards on an annual basis. But First Solar does, and it gives a rare insight into the Tier 1 supplier base. The thin film market leader recognized five premier suppliers with its Nova Award for their work in 2012 at its second annual Supplier Recognition Day. The company hosted nearly 160 of its top suppliers at the event in Phoenix, Arizona, during which it presented awards for outstanding performance to five suppliers. Including advanced material supplier Morgan Crucible, glass company Nippon Sheet Glass, global logistics company Expeditors International, thin film deposition application provider Oryx Advanced Materials, and custom cable wire harness manufacturer Rapid Manufacturing. 
And finally, a third New Zealand-funded PV system has been completed on the remote Pacific island of Tokelau, which means that the New Zealand-owned territory now has the capability to be 100% powered by solar energy. The South Pacific Territory was previously reliant on diesel for electricity generation. The solar power project involved constructing mini solar grids on each of three atolls. The New Zealand government provided 5.8 million US dollars to help finance the project. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.